Kia ora koutou, a koa Emma Philpot aho. I'm a Content and Resource Advisor in National Services Te Paerangi. We're a team at Te Papa which provides support for the museum and gallery sector across New Zealand. We manage nzmuseums.co.nz. It's just one very thin slice of what we do at National Services. This version was launched in 2008. Um, I don't need to tell this audience that the internet has changed a lot in that time. The original intent was to showcase the museums and collections of New Zealand, to be both the museum discovery tool and an online collection management system for museums. The collection sharing is via a community function and eHive collection management software. Uh, Paul Rowe from Vernon um, Systems Limited uh, talked a couple of slides, a uh, couple of um, talks earlier, um, which is uh, it's a product run by Vernon Systems Limited. Uh, the collection, uh, it's, the collection sharing is a low barrier to online. Uh, accessibility, especially aimed at those smaller museums who may not have other means to do this. Like Digital NZ, which shares collection from a very broad pool of contributors, collections featured are shared by participating museums and galleries, not by us. The audience of our website is really the audiences for each of those museums and galleries who participate, whether that's um, providing profiles or collection sharing. So how were we measuring how well we were doing? We monitored growth. Uh, we've now got more than 60,000 items, um, collection items shared on the website. And we also looked at page views, basically checking in on Google Analytics. Uh, we could see that lots of users were looking at lots of pages, but we really didn't know why. We made some assumptions about the types of people probably looking at the site, and we just left it to grow into a really large virtual collection of objects from across New Zealand for more than a decade. So this presentation isn't about the website, um, big new shiny website that we did next. It's a small insight to, into why we're surveying users, what we found, and why you should learn about your audience too. We wanted NZ Museums to better reflect our sector focus, and in turn ensure that we are helping to connect their collections to communities as best we could. A survey would help us with a baseline, and we started with a free pop-up tool called Hotjar. So what did we ask? We had a really short survey, two questions, to find out the user's purpose, and one to check their experience was any good. Because we didn't even know that, I guess. We knew people were looking, but we didn't know if they enjoyed the experience of looking on our website. Um, these were the same questions that Te Papa was using on collections online at the same time, using the same tool. And later we checked in and benchmarks against Hotjar surveys on the main Te Papa website and the Te Papa blog. So 12 months on, we've had 1,600 responses in total, and for this talk I dug deeper into the first six months. And what we found? Both quick validation of our assumptions and an open floodgate of questions. First, looking to validate that the website was allowing users to meet our website's tagline. Could they find museums, explore collections, share stories? Yeah, pretty much. This slide here, it uh, shows the most used words when asked, when asked the question, what we are using NZ Museums for today. The raw results really validate for our audience, for those museums and galleries, that sharing collections is a worthwhile extension to digitisation endeavours. Lucky, because that's what we um, encourage. Specific comments showed people looking for places where their parents and grandparents once worked, buildings with connections and communities that they had lived in and visited. It sort of showed that thing of that real personal connection that people are looking for on the internet. I want to know something about my heritage, my history. But also, there was lots of curiosity around found, unearthed and brought objects. It gave us some insight about this um, unassuming looking bottle, uh, which has been the most viewed item on NZ Museums each year for the last three years. There were comments from people who had found these under houses, in backyards and washed up in beaches. I think it's just really common. <laughs> So also about 7% of the data shows people looking to visit a museum. So this is an, we see uh, NZ Museums as an accessible way of sharing opening hours and collection information. Each organisation can change their own information on the website. So unlike potentially some websites that they're involved in, they can do that within the museum organisation. They may not need to go out to the council to do that themselves. So sharing stories, that looks like the gap. Ehive object pages have a comment function, but it's hard to judge how frequently it's used for sharing meaningful information. And unfortunately, a pop-up survey looks a little bit like a chat box. There was an unintended consequence. People were starting to share directly into it. 
They provided additional information about collection objects, personal connections, and some questions. There was incredibly valuable information for museums holding those collection objects, but for our small team, there was a few flaws with the process. We weren't asking for contact details, no contact details were being provided, and we had really limited resources at our end to follow up or forward responses. There were also questions, lots of questions, what seemed like a floodgate of unanswerable questions. The thing that really bugs me about this one is someone out there can probably answer this question if only that question was asked somewhere else. But analysing our results further, the percentage of responses wasn't too bad. Note that 6% uh, of survey respondents asked a question, and two in three of those decided not to provide us any contact details, so there was no way that we could actually answer them at all. Um, I just wanted to touch also on negative comments. This is one of the milder ones we received. So in your, in your raw data, negative comments stand out, but a really low percentage actually wasted their time writing something instead of shutting, up, shutting the pop-up window, which is the other alternative. And then looking at the percentages, it's really low, and it's also in line with other Tapapa survey results. So not that many people were getting annoyed, but keeping that in mind, we need to ensure we're not collecting data for data's sake. So I'm going to go really quickly through these last two. Um, we looked at the audience impact model. Go see the Tapapa stall and get a copy of this to plug in your own data into it. It's basically um, how we're categorising types of engagement and to record impact internally. Um, is it useful to ask? We got some immediate insights useful for NZ Museum's redevelopment. Uh, we also will be returning to the audience impact model to help define the next iteration of NZ Museums. We hope to enable good practice digitisation, rich storytelling about collections, and prioritisation of acquisitions and deaccessions. We really hope that NZ Museums will continue to have connections with communities wherever they are. If you're, already, if you're not already asking your visitors what they're doing on your website, I encourage you to start as soon as you're back at your desk and before the NDF glow has faded. Thanks for your time.